Hey guys, this is Patty B within the hauler. I got another firearm I'd like to share with y'all. This is my Lithgow number one Mark III Star SMLE. The uh, number one Mark III Star is an Australian made bolt action rifle uh, chambered in 303 British with a 10 round detachable magazine. I'll go ahead and make sure she's clear. Uh, the number one Mark III and number one Mark III Stars were the uh, main Australian battle rifle during World War I and World War II. I'm not going to go too crazy deep into the history of these. It's, it's pretty epic on the history of the SMLE rifle. Um, if you want more info, I would recommend going to the YouTube channels Forgotten Weapons, uh, CN Arsenal, Michiko or British muzzleloaders because they have hours and hours of the history on this and it's you know if you want more info that's the place to go so um, but basically this is the licensed copy of the British number one mark three star in this case um, and that's what the Australian started making in uh, oh, 1907 and then during World War one um, remember about 1916 they changed from the number one Mark III to the number one Mark III Star, uh, just to make it easier to produce, faster, cheaper, all that good stuff due to you know wartime expediency. A um, couple of the changes they made, uh, they removed. There were some volley sights on the original one for shooting out to like I don't know crazy distance when you're just shooting at troops. They removed the magazine cutoff. It had a little uh, slide thing you could push down, and it would keep the magazine from feeding, and you could single load. Uh, I think there was a change to the bolt. Uh, they removed the windage adjustment on the rear sight, and there's a couple other small changes. It's more or less the same rifle. They just took a couple features and did what they could to make be able to make this faster. Um, because, you know, the entire world was at war. So this, uh, the number one Mark III Star, it's got a 25 inch barrel. It's about 44 and a half inches overall. And this particular example weighs nine pounds, three ounces on my scale. All right, we'll go over some of the features on this rifle. You've got your brass butt plate, and it's got a little trap door for a cleaning kit, oil bottle. You've got your sling attachment. Over here, that's your safety. That's safe. Fire. We've already checked it for clear, but we'll check it again. Uh, while we've got it, we'll take the bolt out. Uh, you know, it's pretty unique compared to modern rifles. Um, the locking lugs of the Lee Enfield design are in the rear, which is different than, a, you know, than pretty much any modern rifle. It just makes it, it's not quite as strong, having it locked up there, as opposed to the front. And it's a very small bolt as well. Kind of unique. It's a cock-on-close design. You know, the British love cock-on-close. Uh, here's your cocking indicator when you pull the trigger. Of course, it goes forward and you can manually pull it out. You've got your bolt handle. You've got your charger bridge for stripper clips. The magazine on these is removable, although I don't believe that they ever carried spare mags for these. I think they were just uh, removed for cleaning. Remove it with that lever there. Got your upper hand guards. Um, the rear sight here is uh, adjustable out to 2,000 meters. And it's protected by these thick steel wings. You've got a front sling attachment. You've got some more hand guards. You've got your nose cap and bayonet lug. If you want to stick a bayonet lug on it. And uh, the rear sight is drift adjustable for windage. So uh, it's a pretty cool rifle, you know, growing up and, you know, reading about military history and stuff like that. The, uh, the Lee Enfield variants of rifles were, you know, prominent throughout uh, the majority of last century. You know, they started out as the Lee Metfords in the 1890s and they rolled at least to the 1950s in use for the sniper variants. So basic versions of these were used for a long time. Give you another good look here. Uh, so, like I said, this fires a 303 British, uh, which is a uh, rimmed round, 
Uh, instead of a 308 caliber like America, they have a 312 diameter. So it's just a little bit bigger around and it fires a 174 grain bullet uh, just under maybe 2,500 feet a second. So it's just a little less uh, powerful than the 308, but it's still a full power round for the most part. All right. Well, uh, let's take this old girl out, see how she does. All right, let's take some shots at 100 with the uh, Lithgow number one Mark III. We've got some German MEN uh, ammo we're going to feed it. Kind of ironic using a German 303 to feed a uh, SMLE, but it is what it is. All right, shots out to 100, not too hard. Uh, see what she can do at 200. All right, let's take some shots at 200. Uh, man, this MEN, German-made ammo, sure is pretty. Uh, I think I picked this up at uh, SG Ammo a couple years ago, like 50 cents a round. I doubt you can find it for that price, but if you got an infield to feed, some pretty good stuff. Well, there you go. You know, when I miss, it's uh, certainly not the rifle. That's me. All right, guys, we're back inside from shooting the uh, number one Mark III Lithgo. And, uh, you know, it's just a fun gun to shoot. And it's cool anytime you get to uh, get to take it out. Uh, one of the favorite things about the uh, Enfields is that super slick bolt. You know, it's probably the uh, second slickest bolt of any rifle I've ever shot, the uh, Craig Jorgensen is probably the first that thing is just absolute butter but enfields whether if it's a number one or a number four or even a number five they're super smooth and the coolest thing about the enfield is when everybody else had five round magazines you know the enfields got 10 well which was a big uh big advantage back in the day you have double the ammunition capacity that your enemy has 
So, you know, you can definitely rip through some rounds with the old Enfield. Well, there you go, guys. Lithgow, number one, Mark III star, 303 British. Y'all have a nice day.